This is Sheriff Bob Broadus, and you're watching Grassroots Television. Hi, I'm John Masters. I'm Executive Director of Grassroots Community Television in Aspen, Colorado. Uh, today I've got a special guest and, and uh, a story that's, that uh, kind of unravels into a, 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 a huge story. It starts off real simple and gets um, quite big and it, and it, it involves, uh, Involves murder, involves corruption, conspiracy, fraud, uh, road rage. Um, it's it's a, almost an a unbelievable story, but as you as you get to hear it, you you start believing it more and more, and it becomes more and more intriguing. And um, the the storyteller and 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 the the man who this all involves is uh, my guest today was Fred Money. And uh, those of you in, um, in Aspen probably um, might remember seeing Fred around on a bicycle last year. Was it last year? Um, and I was right across America. And um, it's Fred the Phoenix. Why, Fred, why are you the Phoenix? Uh, well, when I first got around the courthouse and things, and, uh, you know, something happens, you pay the lawyer and stuff, and you end up getting... Whatever. And uh, I just uh, said, well, I lived with some clerks, and I'd worked for a lawyer at a nightclub he'd had, and I watched what went on and stuff. And I mean, I never had no intention, never in my life, getting involved this way. And I just, uh, from living with the clerks and I working at clubs, they'd tell me how it was, and I'd go down and sit with them and watch how papers were filed, and basically just learning how to file one. And uh, why am I paying a lawyer, back in the 60s and early 70s, why am I paying a lawyer 500 800 even $1,500 and he's not going to really get the job done. At least my idea when I went to court was I'm not letting you get away with it. I'm going to make you spend my money that you took or hustled or I felt like you cheated me out of. I'm going to have you down in that courtroom having to pay for a lawyer yourself and make you have to show up. And uh, So as I kept learning what the dirty tricks were and, uh, and I kept from doing that myself that uh, as I learned what was going on, uh, they've got about ten dirty tricks lawyers have which uh, they practice different forms of law, so they'll have one or two in that form. And it takes uh, lawyers over a bigger firm, he might know seven or eight because of the different areas of law they have. But as I kept going into the different areas of law, they had to use that dirty trick on me. But they couldn't use it the next time because I come back. Most of us go to court, once we know we've been screwed in a sense, we don't come back to court. And, uh, you know, we've had enough. Twice, it's definitely over. And uh, But mine was that I just... Like I said, I'm just not letting you get away with it, you know. Uh, not as after lawyers, but whoever the individual was. And so, so they had to get, they, the Bar Association, the Star Chamber that runs Charlotte, the federal courts, New Mecklenburg County, and if you look back, this is when Charlotte's growing. The Speedway's there. They're coming up with the big banks, the 60-story bank buildings and stuff, and they bought a ball team. They have national golf tournaments, tennis tournaments, the basketball team's there. So as I was out on the street behind the scenes, operating in a lot of ways, uh, and I was working with power people and stuff, and I knew my way around the courthouse. Well, then I kept learning more ways around the courthouse, and then the judges got to know me because I was around the people with the money, and so and, the law and certain lawyers that's in the power structure, but they didn't want people to know who I was when they were telling the stories about how I caught them in the act uh -huh. and stuff, not meaning to half yes. the time. But I'd come in and just mess up the whole <laughs> stew, you know. Uh, I, I kind of like the stick in the crap, you know. Smell, it starts smelling. And, uh, and they, they nicknamed me the Phoenix because that's how I learned. I crashed and burned, like we all crashed and burned at the courthouse, but I came out a newer bird because I learned that trick. And now I've learned their tricks so I can duck and dodge them. Or I, can, I took their lick and got back up off the mat. Okay. I call it their sucker punch. And, uh, and then I've developed two uh, tricks of my own. And since they've got glass jaws, basically I never lose when I walk in. If I'm going to walk in that courtroom with you, you're going to win. Uh, okay, so... 
Uh, Fred's a by your so amateur paralegal sort of. Uh, when I'm and a, and, yeah. and you, I, you sort of spent a lot of your life uh, sniffing out injustices and and mm -hmm. helping others and and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is a case, though, it, it directly involves yourself. Yes. And so I'm going to, I, I think I'll go over real quickly how the start of all this, and you correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, Fred, you were, you were on your way to work with a friend. Uh, is that right? At, uh, well, I was uh, working on one job. Another guy was working on one beside it. And we were doing it at night. It was so hot. This is in Salt Lake City, Utah. And he was working at the one beside it. And we got to know each other and talking, and uh, I'd give him some clothes I'd picked up on some surplus. I'd trained in that years ago. And I was out there doing a story about disability getting back in life. I came down with transverse mellitus in 93. They said I'd never walk again. came down with what? Transverse mellitus. It's a cousin to MS. Okay. It's about the best way. To, it's in that family, neurological family. And I'm what they call a real miracle just by being able to walk again. So uh, we decided I should do a story about what goes on really in a rest home because I was watching this stuff. and. Uh, and oh, the crap there. It's like a living prison for people. And uh, so I was able to leave. He said, I should do a story about it. Because what I had documented on where our money's going and, uh, uh, or whose pocket it's going to. And uh, I thought, well, I would do a story of how to get back in life, too. So from people I knew, I was kind of steered to Salt Lake City to be away from family, friends, any kind of connection, business connections and stuff, and to see how tough it is in America. And since Salt Lake was going to be representing the Olympics, this is the all-American city, so let's just see how America, America really is. And that's why I went there, not knowing I was going to have this controversial stuff. Yes. And uh, so it was, uh, I'd helped this uh, guy uh, named Corey Kapakis that night. And went over to help him clean up his warehouse. He'd, he'd been having some problems. And we were coming back to our bus, our prospective jobs at 4.30 that morning, going on 5 o'clock. Okay. And that's when we pulled up, was coming up on, I didn't even know where I was at. And we were pulling up on what was called 215, going on to the expressway. And Corey stopped because we saw two cars down on it. And Corey wasn't going to go. And I said, well, you know, I'm a, I am why I was in the Boy Scouts first aid, life-saving things. So I felt like I should be able to do my part because I want you to come on. You do my I want. We both need to know each other so we can help each other. Yes. And I said, I, you know, they might, somebody could be having a stroke or a diabetic coma or just need the car pushed out of the highway. I've seen enough people get killed from running into parked cars or stalled cars. So uh, we went on down there, and it turns out this was what you said was a road rage, as they said, and this guy was killing a Lee Parker on his way to work as a postal worker. So there was a, a apparently, actually a guy who was what, tripping on acid. Uh, That's what, what they were what, saying. What the yeah. news story says uh, later, and uh, he had a gun, and he was actually, he, he murdered cold, in cold blood in a, in a craze, murdered a guy on, on, the, on the freeway at 4.30 And also in the shot us. And then you guys came along at just right at that moment. Right almost. in the middle of it. And, and uh, so he started shooting at, at yeah. your car. And um, now after this, you, you, you realized there was something horrible going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously. And, and, and uh, so you went to a convenience store and called 911. Uh -huh. Because the guy chased us, rammed the truck. Oh, that's right. Out. He rammed your truck. Yeah, a lot of he stuff he got that. back in his car and yeah. followed you down the, the highway Chases. and yeah. and chased you down the highway and shot at you and and, and hit your car. This doesn't happen to most people. Mm -mm. No, I haven't I haven't read anything else <laughs> like it. No, no. Okay, now mm -hmm. so you get off the 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 freeway and and go to a convenience store, call nine one one, and uh, the and the they tell you to stay there. No. Oh. No, they came and uh, started talking to Corey, and I said, well, Corey knows the area and everything. Okay. So I said, I've been up all day and all night working that plan, and uh, now I said, I'm going to just go over and get a nap in the truck. You talk to the highway patrolman, because they, they couldn't send the city because it's out on the expressway. And uh, so Corey was talking to him. Next thing they handcuffs Corey, because Corey and I just met that evening. Ah. You said, we didn't even know each other, okay. really. So Corey can't give him co complete answers and stuff, and, uh, and, and now our story's standing uh, thing, but uh, like I said, we called them, we waited on them. We're not belligerent, we're not trying to get away. I'm over in the truck going, I take a 15 minute nap. Next thing you know, the Howard Trollman comes and wakes me up, and I thought, well, what kind of questions did he handcuffs me? How he had hand Corey, Corey handcuffed in the back of his car for 15 minutes. And this is what I mean later, well, if he thinks we're the ones that shot him, why is he letting me in the truck with a gun? Yes. You know what right. I mean? Uh, and the right. stuff. 
So then they took us not to the police station, didn't have Corey's truck impounded. They uh, took us over where they'd, this car had been dumped, and somebody stole a Cadillac, and they were wanting us they want us to identify the car. Why didn't we have a tag number and this and that? And that? And I'm looking at these police officers like, well, where did y'all get your basic training? You know, and, uh, <laughs> and finally I had to go up because we told them they had rammed us, chasing us. So I had to go up this little kind of a tan Chevette or something. I don't know what it was. Like it. And I had to, and my handcuffed. I'm having to walk over to the car 100 yards from when he brought it up or so and say, all you had to do is look and see that light blue paint and the light blue paint off the truck and match them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. as, as, and they're going, you know, and, that. and then I got a little bit of a problem. I said, y'all have no business having Olympics come here if y'all can't do no better than this. Okay. Well, I'm in Mormon yeah, You have no business and, having the Olympics come. Yeah. So, it's all <laughs> yeah, with you can't and handle a couple of guys and, and, and. Well, they totally, totally mishandled yeah, the yes. whole thing. Okay. So that kind of got me on the wrong with the Mormons because yes. they're gods and their attitude and stuff. Okay. I didn't know. Remember now, I had no religious thing. I had no axe to grind. Uh, uh, I have to learn this stuff from the way they treat other people, reading, reading other people's stuff, talking to people, Mormons, Temple Recommend, other things, and this attitude that they have. Uh, what, say what they want. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, it's their town. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, what I said. Rome do as Romans yeah, do. Yeah. So, um, now it turns out the, the, the man who was murdered was a postal employee. Yes. And he was on his way to work. Yes. And uh, you knew of, or I, I think you already knew of, a. Uh, uh, no, we didn't know anything oh. about him or anything. In fact, okay. we didn't well, know. No, I, I mean about the uh, rule that, or a law, or a reward. Well, I'd read about a reward, but I wasn't quite as foggy like anybody. I'd read the rewards and things in the post office, and you know. So I've been to the FBI website, or they're most wanted before, but mm -hmm. I'm not memorizing it. Mm -hmm. but, but I wanted to have some idea, so if something ever come up. Mm -hmm. It's just general knowledge, not for mm -hmm. that I was Yes, uh, well, of course. Uh, and that that dim memory was that there's some sort of reward for the uh, in helping uh, uh, capture a, and convict someone who, I believe, harms a, a postal employee. Well, they have a, about 10 things. And it starts out with murder manslaughter. And it has $100,000 for that. And then some other things, 50000 25,000, 15,000, 10, or something like that. Okay. It kind of goes down in graduation okay. of how they look at the and, crime. And so if you help uh, uh, provide information or uh, towards the conviction of, of someone who, in this case, murdered a, a mm -hmm. postal employee, um, that there's this reward is, is available. And um, it, the sticking point seems to be, though, that uh, it, they need... They need to have been in that situation on account of their employment, employment, with, yes. employment with the postal uh, service, and and this uh, the victim was was on his way to work. Right. So you applied for the reward. So well, right? Corey, we talked late that afternoon because we were handcuffed for four hours, and then we were taken in to be questioned and stuff. At this time, I'd already had a little bit of a run-in with not proper police procedures. Yes, there. And so I'm not saying anything because this guy's we understand could be belonging to one of these gangs or something, you know. The, and the I don't murderer. Need a, yeah, yeah, and I said I'm not going to have him hunting me down. I don't have anything out here, you know. I mean, I don't have a friend. I can go, you know. You see what I'm saying? I just, uh, I just you know, you know, I, you, I felt naked out there. You know? Yes, and yes. I, you don't have any friends, and, so, and you probably don't want to get involved any more than that, you already are. I just told Corey they know you, know where you at, your family's there, you're around your family, things, people in that neighborhood know you and stuff, you know. Uh, you know, you do the talking, and I'll follow up on it. And so, uh, I mean, as, as far as that. So then afterwards, uh, 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 they, uh, uh, Corey went to, uh, I told Corey, I said, you know, Corey, there's a reward involved here, I believe, uh, from, you know, the thing, because uh, he's supposed to work on his, uh, you know, yes. part, as part of the job. Yes. And he said, uh, uh, now this is how we found it out as hours went by and stuff. So we, uh, uh, in fact, when we had to go pick up Corey's truck, we were out there when the, uh, the CI, what's this, uh, CSI group? Yes. Yes. And I'm learning everything. They don't know I have a paralegal background, so I'm asking them the questions of what happened. So I'm not going to get into it now, but I was learning all kind of stuff that they didn't put out to the public. Okay, so the forensics, so the forensics investigator, yeah. investigators are there mm -hmm. inspecting the car. Yeah, yeah and, doing and all their measurements with the lines. And, and you had bullet holes in your car. Well, the truck was there, but there was about six bullet holes in the car that the postal guy was in. Oh, okay. And yeah, so and uh, your truck was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. 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 Okay. So... Uh, and so we uh, learned how many, they, knew, they were telling us about the body and how he'd been hit and things and stuff. 
And uh, so that's just like I said, this is when we go to part two later. Uh, uh, but the part was, uh, since Corey was family and all that, Corey went to see the postal inspector. And uh, he's a father uh, with three children, so he could use the extra money. Yes. And, uh, and it's a way to reward it is set up is split between however many. And uh, so uh, he went to see his, uh, his name was Shouting or Shooting or something like that, the postal inspector. And um, Corey came back and said, yeah, he talked to him. He said, yeah, we got it coming. But we got to wait to the conviction. So, so Corey went to the postal inspector in Salt Lake City. Yes. Uh, postal inspector. What's this postal inspector? Uh, well, they, 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 before 9-11, they were the strongest uh, enforcement arm in the United States. They could carry search warrants in their pocket because it had to do with the post office and stuff. Okay. And they could fill them out right there on the spot. Okay. I mean, that was, and so there's one in each district. Oh, bunch, oh there's a bunch. They could have been on that, but there's a bunch of like that. that uh, Salt Lake is a regional, yes. so he would have been the head one. They could have been three or four there. Or, okay. You know, it's kind of like a regional office for the. Uh, okay, and so the FBI postal has. inspector uh, in Salt Lake City told Corey that once there's a conviction, yeah, that and the that's reward what, is coming toward. That's him. what it says on rest and conviction. That's okay. how it says. Okay. So, then. Uh, you know, we get down there in the convictions, man. The guy gets 30 years for trying to kill. Uh, uh, what they did is they had him plead guilty to the uh, murder, but then they had a gun enhancement after he pleaded guilty because of the gun. So then when he pleaded guilty to, to Corey's murder, and then, I mean, to uh, trying to kill Corey and also trying to kill me, they put the call box card at 30 years, 30 years. Yes. So he got 65 years where he's, he's 20 years old, 65 more before he even starts coming up for parole. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's how they worked it with him. Okay. But he was convicted of a of murder, a, a murder and attempted murder. Yes. So there wasn't no question about us being there in the documentation, the yes. witnesses, you know. Yeah. Yes. So afterwards, uh, Corey goes to see the. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, and everybody else I was talking to, because I was out at the community college doing an entrepreneurship program, and was trying to get stuff, and they think, uh, the, well, they'd have to check there the next day. I mean, they do have one day express. <laughs> you know, it ain't like yes. they didn't know us and stuff, yes. and it would be good PR for them. The yes. Postal Service. Yes. And yes. Uh, so yes. something came up somewhere behind the scenes of politics or something. And uh, all of a sudden, Corey goes out and he says, Well, we're not paying you because of a, on account of. I mean, he hadn't got to work yet. Okay, so they're not going to pay you because of the term on mm -hmm. account of. Mm -hmm. So And he wasn't at work yet. And so someone is now arguing, I don't know who it is that told mm -hmm. Corey this. The, the, the sh sh shouting. And then I went to see him. This, is this the same yeah, yeah, same postal inspector, inspector? Same postal inspector. Who originally said, oh, yeah, this is obvious. Yeah, yeah. And now he's getting the word that because of the term on, on account of their employment, um, and he wasn't at work yet, that there's no reward. And to cut to the chase a little bit here, it, it seems like in common usage, on account of... I, th I think people can kind of see there's, it can be looked at two different ways, but that if I'm on the road coming to work, I'm on the road on account of my employment. Yes. Th that's why I'm on the road. And um, the Postal Service is saying, no, you have to be at work first. Like you have to clock in. You have to clock in. But at least be on their property or something. Okay. So, so uh, how about in uniform? Well, almost, but see, the supervisors and things, there's different kinds of uh, uniforms. Oh, he was a supervisor. Stuff. Well, so they said he was, and they said he was a fill-in supervisor. I've had to go through a lot of stuff about this. And uh, the part of, uh, I said something's not right here because uh, of the ambiguity. If they're going to claim that, I knew the law from doing philosophy of law and going up to Duke and Harvard and sitting in classes and reading and stuff. Yes. I took it up as a hobby after I got into stuff a little deeper. So I would know when I was working on something that had an issue or not. Yes. And uh, the ambiguity means it goes to the citizen. It goes to the citizen. citizen. If it's ambiguous, yeah. then the, the government doesn't win, the citizen wins. They've got to correct it. They've got to pay and correct it. That's in contract law with the Defense Department. In fact, it even says if they have a, a signed contract in the Defense Department, you have to see most of it, you'll see litigation. When you say that pay way. and correct it, it means they have to pay and, and then figure out and what that ambiguity was and, and correct yeah, that ambiguity. They didn't like it, they got to for the make future. It, yeah, they got to correct it. They, they got to make it the way they want it. Okay. They're the ones issuing the reward. The right. So if it's a law, it's an ambiguous law. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then even in contract law, uh, for the f premise of, of American law, that uh, 
if there's a little ambig uh, a disagreement or something, yes. that the government is supposed to kind of bend a little bit because it can't have it as such a hard ass that nobody wants to do business with it. Okay. Yes. So they'll even take the back seat even when they don't think it's ambiguity, you know, okay. uh, uh, stuff just to keep the, they can't do cash on the barrel head, as it says. Okay. So, so I, I knew that much, you know. Well, there happened to be the university law school there. So I just did about my butt up there and I go into the law school and I'm reading. They didn't know this thing. I think this is the biggest thing. They thought this was just screwing who anybody wanted to. So I'm reading. I go up there and the words okay, and phrases. You're, say, you're saying they don't know who they're dealing with here. Me. Yeah, yeah I have yes. a background. Yes, the, the, the so, Postal Service picked on the wrong guy. Yeah. Okay. This right. has been said so many times. <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, So cause they look at me and say, oh, we can push him around, or, and then especially uh, when I got yes. older and then when I was yes. on disability. Well, you were wearing a Gonzo him. shirt. What, you know. Well, I, I just felt like uh, I liked the way he was. His, his uh, saying, uh, been bending yourself into journalism in the story, I did that in my legal work. Uh, I, I, I worked for some heavy-duty, big-time organizations, but I always kept my... Uh, um, independence, uh, autonomy, as it was said. And uh, I was still under their rules, and I was still a member, but I had my autonomy. I didn't have to take an order. Okay. And some of these organizations, when you come in, you can't get out, and things okay. like that. Okay, so Fred's independent, and he, he has a pretty good idea of what he's doing, and he knows where to go look stuff up. That's the biggest look, thing. Look stuff well, that's up. what you learn in law school. Mm -hmm. uh, every time you turn around, you be asking a lawyer a question, he has to try and get a book, or I'll get back with you or something. Right. You, you can't remember all that stuff. Right. It's just everywhere. So I pull up the thing about rewards. I read everything I can about rewards, and I get back into contract law and the stuff, and I find out that a reward is a promise, which is more binding in law, in the jurisprudence of law and thing, than a contract, a signed contract. And uh, so as uh, uh, I did with that, uh, I, did, I went to research the part. I also networked with some students. I had the little story wrote up. I paid a writer to help me write the story. Uh, that. Uh, I give it to them, third-year law students, brightest minds of Utah, and that is a work product because they can't li give legal advice. Yes. And they network with the professors. And they, I was supposed to come back next week, and I did, and they said, because I'm thinking, well, what is it I don't know here? You know, and because uh, 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 if, if they had one thing and I got 50 things, I still want to know what the one thing is they're trying to use. And so I said, uh, they come back and said, you definitely have this coming. But since I've never been involved in this area of law, mine was civil and criminal law back in a, that uh, not tort law. And so uh, they told me, you write a letter because you got punitive coming here. If you just go ahead and sue, you just get the 100 grand. Corey had dropped out. Oh. So if he dropped out, I, I asked him to help me a little bit and we'll do it. Oh, you can't do it in here. Moments control is just that. No, you can do it. And I said, no, yeah, I, this is my country. My flag's here. They don't own the federal okay, government. Okay, so Corey decides at this point, I, as, yeah. I'm not going to fight this it. anymore. Right. And he's got a family and he's. Uh, He's got other things to do. Yeah. And doesn't think this is going to go anywhere. Because of how the moment's controlled. Yeah, I'm just going to recap where uh -huh. we are in case somebody came in kind of late on this. Okay. So uh, Fred witnesses a, a, the murder of a um, postal employee, and there is a, uh, a, a rule, a law, in the, that, that says that anyone who uh, helps in the arrest and conviction of a, uh, uh, of a criminal that, that has harmed a postal employee, in this case murdered a postal employee, there is a reward. And in this case for murder, it's $100,000. Um, and the operative words were um, that the postal employee was in the situation uh, they were in on account of their, their employment yes. with the postal service. So uh, Fred uh, um, applied for the uh, uh, reward. And at first, it, everything was green lights, and then suddenly, no, he doesn't get the reward uh, because the... After the conviction. After the conviction. conviction. After the conviction, right, because uh, the Postal Service is now arguing that he, uh, the victim was not... Uh, he was not in that situation on account of his job, even though he was on his way to work. Okay, so um, now you, you say you're getting some sort of advice, albeit not from attorneys, but from, from law, the professors, from to professors, teach law, civil litigation, law, law professors, yeah. um, that uh, who might be attorneys, I suppose, they could have be, be, be members of the bar, certainly. <laughs> yeah. um, so they're arguing now that that not only should you get the reward, but you should get punitive yes. damages because why? 
Well, because there's deception going on here. Even there's deception fraud. because the, the the Postal Service, it's clear. Well, see, so you can sue like that any time, but in the government tort law, you have to write this letter, or you just won't. You just get. Oh, the, and I think the point here now is that obviously, on account of, is ambiguous. No. Well, okay, you're saying it's not ambiguous, well, that's what we're but getting... it could be ambiguous. Yeah, I, well. mean, I mean, the best argument the government has is that it's ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. R really? Really. And ambiguous uh, goes to the system. And the amb ambiguous falls to, to you. So, um, uh, so this is where you're seeing some, some sort of, what are you saying, fraud involved? Or? Well, the professors were. They are, see, the professors okay. have already read all this stuff. They know it inside and out. Okay. I'm coming along. Okay. They're coming back saying you definitely got it. Yes. Uh, through the students, yes, uh, of, uh, of confiscatory as well as punitive. But you have to write a letter under tort law with the federal government. Now, now somebody out there watching this saying, Fred, get an attorney. Well, my part, uh, Corey already had got an attorney. And uh, an attorney told him what nothing could do. And that's why I ended up being a paralegal as good as I was, because I saw how attorneys, when you win, they sell you out. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm not here to try to have much. I, you know, I've done battle with the bar in North Carolina and lawyers, but that's why they admired me for standing up and fighting when everybody else just quits, you know, and stuff. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, I always, it was like they said about Jenny Reno one time, watch out, mess with her because she knows where all the bodies were buried. Yes. That's what they said about me in North Carolina. I knew where the bodies were in politics and the big money and stuff, literally and unlearly. Okay. From just being around people and what happened and things, and uh, when you're in that world, you just, you don't go around sniffing too much. Uh, okay, so you you but, feel uh, like you're you're qualified more than most of us certainly in, in representing yourself. Oh anyway. yeah, oh yeah, because I know I've been in front of a judge one time, and the lawyers that knew me, they said, "Freddie, why are you going to have a, you want us to appoint you somebody?" And I said, "No, sir." And he said, "The judge didn't know me, and the, the lawyers, some of the big name lawyers, were in that courtroom that day, and they knew." And they said, "They said why?" Why don't you want it? And I said, well, I'm not going to stab myself in the back. If I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose. And they all started, they didn't know the whole courtroom went quiet. And then those three, two or three big lawyers, they started laughing. And then everybody started laughing. Yeah, so was, uh, then the judge, he's looking at those lawyers because he knew they were established. The ones, and he's trying to look at me and figure out what's going on. And, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, I wasn't being smart. I was just made the statement. He asked me, I told him, you know. Okay, so you're going to represent yourself, and and they advise you to write a letter. Who are you writing the letter to? I write a letter to the postal inspectors who are in charge of the rewards. Okay, and they're in Salt Lake or in, uh, in Washington, D.C.? In Washington, D.C. You have to watch the main, main office. Okay. And okay. I get the letter back on the letterhead saying it on account of. So, meanwhile, I just thought of where it was because I went from there. Everyone understands that on account of is the code word yeah, here code for word. this is the this is whether he's at work or not. And so, so I that, just felt like their was, argument. From hearing, I was around the Mormons and stuff, and people saying, "Well, it's just their attitude. They feel like all the money belongs to them there and stuff like that." And that's probably somebody's taking on that thing. I didn't think it'd be good. it would pass over that same way in Washington D.C., but I get this letter back. Yes. Satan. Well, we're turning it down from the head guy. Yes. Uh, postal inspectors or deputy head guy or something, and uh, he says that too. So I said, well, on account of, I know the English language, I know ambiguity. Uh, for me, a study of history, I'm looking at this, they're starting to come on as some kind of Nazi organization. They're going to do what they want. You know, they, 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 they so get a little power. You're, you're seeing a, a conspiracy or, or something Arr here. Uh, uh, arrogance and more. A arrogance and mm -hmm. more. And, uh, and, uh, and so, and see, a lot of times when things get like it, it gets started, and this person starts protecting that person. Yeah, they're covering they're, they're, their own bodies. Yeah, yeah, and stuff yes. like that. And, yeah. uh, and, and so. Uh, and they're protecting those further down, and yeah. the, the, the group and, is. And it keeps getting worse. It's coming together. Yeah. Okay, so, I, I'm sorry. Can we take a break just for a minute? And I'm gonna be, yeah. we're going to be right back in just a minute. Can we, uh, can we do that? Now, if you want to, if we go over an hour, take it, to the other hour. It's going to take a second. Okay, we're, we're back. It, we, we took a couple of minutes, but to you it was only a moment to fix Fred's microphone. Okay, so, sorry. We are, you've written a letter to the uh, guys in D.C., the, the, the postal inspectors in D.C., and they, uh, they're circling the wagons now, and, and, and they're all agreeing with the guys further down. Yes. Okay. So I then go up to pull what's so called words and phrases, Section of law, words and, to, words and phrases. phrases. You're looking well, up. You're researching section, words and phrases. The section on, on account of. Okay. Uh, and uh, how it's ever been ruled on. Yes. 
and there's not much on account of. Uh, yeah, so I you, you, ha you have yeah. it. You have it way, this is going to be in this section. In this section. Yeah, you go to a, a nine. Okay. And, and, I, and you're right, there isn't very much about on account of. Now, what I'm showing in this is just showing that it exists for the people I'm sending it to. Yes. And, it, and it just show, I'm just showing that it's in there. Yes. I'm not try, I didn't do I didn't, It'd be yes. so sick. Yes. It, 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 but it, there wasn't much on account of. It's a legal term, but there isn't very much case law about on account of. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And so when you go back to the second page on it, you see where it says because of? Yes. Now, if it went on account of, it seemed to affirm if it had to do with work. Yes. But it's just a couple of cases on it. And, but then it, even in here, when you see the account of part, it says because of. And on account of means by reason of, because of. So now, it, this is when you learn legal research, I go look up these words, the so phrases. That, so, and, and not only that, it seems like right about here, well, because of, if, 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 if I'm commuting to work, it's because yeah. of work. Well, they both, they're the same. Okay, well, they're the sense. same, but this almost seems more colloquial and yeah. more. And so, you, and then when you go to the part that goes to because of, Yes. There's a lot of case law that yes. this phrase has been used. Okay. Uh, and, and, and in other words, account of is derived from because of. Yes. So that means whatever, it says, whatever the case law says about because of uh, applies to, to account, account of. of. And yes. they wrote the reward. They're supposed to, they, they, their legal department and everything, they know that. They know it comes from that. So now you've got fraud when they're saying it doesn't apply, but when you go to because of it, there's plenty of case law, it starts applying it. Yes. There's not really much question of it. And then even shows that because of is derived from four, yes, from way so back in the law. Yes. So it just uh, goes back to the roots of it, you know. Right. And, uh, and so it's all there. There's nothing that establishes them saying no, nothing in any way, shape, or form. So uh, I uh, end up filing a lawsuit. Right. And uh, as a uh, from the so far, it's just been letters and uh, verbal, and so well, now I know I've got them. So now you got them. And I know I've got the punitive. Yes. As well as compensatory and stuff, or compensatory as well as punitive. And so I just go ahead and stick a figure in there about, I can't remember if it was about 50 million or something. Because the one thing I know, I went to schools, I one of the first things they ever had schools about picking juries. And since I'm a worker, I understand you better than the lawyers who just went through law school and do law. And uh, I, I can sit there and watch the jury okay. and, and know when you're saying something wrong to that individual. You okay. see what I mean? Uh, okay. it's where I get to be secure. The jury I, connects with you better than with an attorney. Well, I can tell when you're connecting with them when you're not. Okay. And especially, yeah, and then, yes, by doing it myself, yes. I am you standing up. Yes. And, uh, uh, okay, so part. you're a citizen standing yeah. up for your own rights. And, okay. and then it's the big bad government jumping up and down. Okay. And when you catch them, then the jury's going your way. Okay. And that's what they do in cases everywhere. When they catch the person lying, that's where the big punish, punitive damages come from. It's not because they're just giving away, they've got no reason. It's because these corporate people or something got caught lying in the courtroom to them, and they've lied to the country. That affects your lying to the country when you're lying to the jury. Correct. So, uh, the, uh, and so, uh, and they stick it to you for that reason. And uh, that's the only reason most of the time they get these big judgments. But uh, so, by filing it, uh, I said, I was, I, was, I was still going on the same thing. I went out there to do a story about disability getting back in life. So this just connected to the story of. Yes, yeah, so it's all one big was, story of, of how you get back on your feet again. Yeah, and then and, these circumstances happen. And then they just, keep, it keeps coming at you. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I just happen to have the background that okay. could do something with it. Okay, so now you're suing the U.S. Postal Service? Yes. For $50 million or yeah. whatever? Yeah, okay. and 100000 plus the okay. compensatory <laughs> plus the uh, okay. punitive. Okay. Well, now uh, they panic. I mean, I'm just saying because I know what's going on. Yes, yes. And uh, all of a sudden... They thought uh, you'd go away by now. Yeah. And uh, uh, they never expected it. Because now it's on paper. And it got names on paper mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, uh, so when you sue and it has the postal thing for postal service or anything, the federal government, the Justice Department handles it for the reasons to make sure there's any hanky panky going on either way. Right. Especially in a case where you have a, a, a reward or something, it, it, there's a potential that maybe postal employees could all get together and create some yeah. sort of scenario where or they government could, employees or too. government employees mm -hmm. yeah. right, right and they could they could split that reward and, and, and create some sort of fraud or one so they remove it from that that area wherever it is in the government and they have the justice department take over that case yeah okay. 
So at the same time, when that didn't happen, I knew I met some people. Is, is this was, universal? They always do this? Yeah. So, yeah. so you always have this separation between, in this case, the Postal Service and the Justice Department. Now, if it's a federal law, the local attorney handles it. Federal law between citizens and corporations and stuff. Okay. But when it's the federal government itself, it's the Justice Department. Okay. And, and, and for the Postal Service to get involved, they have to ask permission to get involved with their own legal department. Kind of, you, you see, you know, to, okay. Uh, but it's, it's got to be separate. And so, uh, so they have their own legal department, but they handle legal stuff, basically. The just legal internal stuff. Yeah. legal and, situations. And, and however they write up the rules. Not even, write, even the legal department will write up the reward right. to start with. Okay, right. Uh, out of D.C. probably, you know. And uh, so... Um, this is when you start getting the first thing, which I didn't know, like I said. So all of a sudden it comes down that I, uh, the, the answer comes back. We went through some arguments for different things. And uh, they've, uh, uh, it, they, they, they point to the special assistant, U.S. attorney. And I thought, why are they pointing to the special assistant when they have Justice Department lawyers? Civil division. they got the criminal division, civil division, and some other divisions that okay. breaks okay. down when you look at the Justice Department under the attorney general. And for whatever, I, I know things like it can be done. It's like special prosecutor, in a sense. For me, to a citizen looking at it. And uh, uh, his name was uh, Kurt Lusty. And now it comes down, it's got the heading of the U.S. Attorney Utah, which is Paul Warner, because uh, it's in his area. So they'll do that. Okay, so, so Paul Warner, who is U.S. Attorney in Utah, Utah. hires... No, no, he can't do it. It has to be the Attorney General. The attorney general well, hires a special, special assistant. assistant. Has, yeah. Okay. And, he, and, he's and he's now he's working under Paul Warner. Not either. really. Not he's really. working for the attorney general. Okay. All right. Or the just, you know, okay. he's, well, a, he's, he's a part of the justice department. Why do I care about Paul Warner? Because the, they put it on the heading, and it comes out later. Yeah, you know I mean, it's because it's in his area and things like okay, that. Okay, so, so... But it means Paul Warner knows what's going so on. So the letterhead or, or whatever... And Paul or, Warner knows what's going on. He don't okay. sign nothing unless he knows what's going on in the case. He's got to sign off. If, if it's anything good or bad, he's got to sign off on it. Okay. I mean, or he is. Well, he's got to or not... And uh, so now this is a special assistant, and he also gets a salary as a special assistant. The, and, the, and the attorney general sets that salary. Okay. So, uh, so and that's a special assistant statutes. working for the Justice Department mm -hmm. and, and hired by the attorney general. general. So, uh, Who at that time was? John Ashcroft. John Ashcroft. Okay. So now uh, he files a motion to dismiss. Well, I'm not even looking for a motion to dismiss because I know what the basic premise of law is. He's supposed to come in and find out. Is there a reward offered by the postal system? Yes. Did this happen? Yes. Then he's supposed to order them to pay it. He can't put up with their crap. He's not supposed to start creating some kind of... A motion to dismiss is a, a misconduct of his part as an attorney. He cannot... A U.S. attorney cannot file a motion to dismiss or shouldn't? Yeah, no, or not what, in what? this type of instance because he's supposed to find out what the truth is. And so the first thing he did was... To find out what the truth is. Okay, but the well, first thing he actually is, did... motion to dismiss. Okay. Well, so I'm saying what's going on, but at the time... I understand now. I would you should at least look into it and that's see... What, that's, why, it, that's why the Justice Department handles it. Okay. To make sure there's nobody doing nothing. Okay. I mean, if the government's doing wrong, somebody's a citizen, just because you got a job in the citizen, it's not your government. You, don't, you can't crown yourself and start making rules to see, suit yourself. Yes. Or, or bend them or twist them or whatever. Okay. So that's why the Justice Department comes in to make sure that you're not doing something that somebody else... And to make sure there's no collusion going on between people to get a free drink at the public treasury trough. Okay. I mean, it could have been nobody killed. It could have been this, that, and that. If it was just the U.S. Attorney of Utah, me and him and the postal guy got in together. You okay. see what I mean? So the yeah. Justice Department comes in to make sure me and the U.S. Attorney didn't do something with the Postal Service. As a sense of, of explaining it. Yes. Okay. So at the time, and the thing what happened is I was riding a bicycle across the country for, I, I was doing this ride for America with a charity that set something up. And I'm caught in 9-11 out in the middle of Kansas. There's no, it's not in the middle of Kansas. No, I mean, they didn't have internet at the public library, much less a, law, a, law, a lawyer. And everybody was given to 9-11. You couldn't even talk to anybody or anything else. So I, ha I couldn't file an answer to the motion to dismiss, in which it was... You're stuck uh, in the middle of Kansas at 9-11. No communication, no money, no nothing, on a bicycle. And so I had to let that... But I knew under the default thing, I could come back and open it back up. Okay, so the, the motion to dismiss, and you couldn't respond to that motion to dismiss, dismiss but you felt that was okay. You Not knew it was about okay, but I just couldn't do anything at the moment, but I knew I could come back, come back and, re and, and, and okay. bring it back because there was, uh, you have to read about what the faults are, and I won't get into the whole legalization. Okay. And, but this case had never been tried. 
so that nobody was being harmed. And the government's got to keep its good name, so there's no reason for it not to. Okay. Uh, for, to remove a default. And so uh, I get back, and I, I get stuck for two years on the East Coast uh, of different ways. Everybody's got things in life and problems. I finally get back, and I start looking into it to see about what's going on. It's a long time to let it ride, though. Well, I, I wasn't nothing I could do. I mean, I was telling people, if you come out here and help me do the reward or something, I'd give you $100,000 of this money. You know? mm -hmm. And I didn't even want everybody thinking you're crazy, you don't know what you're doing, and uh, mm -hmm. whatever's going on. I didn't, mm -hmm. and I just kept knocking around. So I get back, and I go to pull up the file, the things that were said, and uh, uh, there it was of a uh, uh, special assistant, Lusty. So I'm going to file a default. I've got to serve him because he was the attorney that was involved in it. Okay. To open, the, you got to notify him. Okay. Not serve, but yes, notify him. Yes. Okay. So I got the address that he had sent me on my stuff. It just had an address. So I think he's an attorney in private practice or something. Okay. You know, that's been, that's he, been he, hired he, for this particular yeah, case. Yeah, because he's, uh, uh, he's not out of the U.S. Attorney's Office in yes. Utah. So I go down there, and lo and behold, I go up to the floor and go to the address where it is. There it is, legal department, U.S. Postal Service. I thought, my God, what the hell's going on here? You know, because this is definitely a conspiracy against my rights as a citizen to be able to file paperwork, a, 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 a right to address the government for grievance and due process of law. And it's also denying me a jury. Well, it seems so it's like all three right there. It seems like they're going around the rule that the Postal Service can't try well, well, this well, case or be involved in this. Now, you get back to it when the Justice Department has an attorney. It's in the Justice Department statutes under the judiciary. Yes. The uh, statutes part of the Title 28 that if there's a conflict of interest, like if the Attorney General is handed off to somebody in the Civil Division, a Justice Department lawyer in D.C., and for some reason there's a conflict or, or it could have an appearance of impropriety, they're supposed to, I call it, excuse themselves for us like here on the street, let's recuse in yes. legal language. Yes, if there's a conflict of interest. Uh, yeah, if, or, or even the parents. Yes, that's right. They're supposed to recuse themselves. I mean, it's like if you were the Justice Department lawyer, uh, you was going to be handling it, and you maybe used to work in the postal system somewhere, or you had a close relative in the postal service, and it would, you, you just didn't want to have this anything come up with some favor or yes. quick or pro was going yes. on. Yes. So... Definitely, you do not hire an attorney outside well, because he's already getting paid by the Postal Service. You understand? He's, he's already an employee getting, of the Postal, uh, postal Service. Postal Service, legal department, uh, and they have to get permission to come on board. Now, now this is being put to me in the courtroom of what's going on. So there lets you know what's happening. But that they, they had a special assistant where he's wearing two hats. He's drawing two salaries. It's like a double dip at the trough to, America, uh, to public treasury uh, or the U.S. Treasury. And, uh, and so you're saying, why are they, and this is just uh, when you, uh, the rules of uh, impropriety and stuff or the rules of ethics, uh, they'll defer usually to the state, and uh, Utah does defer to the state, Utah, the bar rules, and it has all that section right out. This is just not. No, no. It's misconduct. If you caught in that courtroom and you didn't notify the judge of it and the other party, that's total misconduct. And it's what resorts to fraud upon the court. And I still didn't know. I said, wow, what am I getting into here? You know, this is yeah, huge yes. because I have studied the law, and these people now are officers, just like a military officer. Are officers, okay. Of the country, of the government. They swore an oath, pledge of allegiance, swore an oath, promise, all that kind of tangles together. For them to be doing what they're doing, now they're undermining the will and intent of the Constitution, the honor and integrity, and the power of the Constitution of the United States. This is an act of sedition. They've entered into an act of sedition at the people of the United States, not just me. And that's an act of treason. So this has took on huge mongus because all these people are looking at 30-year sentences. And it's not new about these missing emails. You understand what I'm saying? It's not, yes. this, is doc, this is documented, all of it right here. And now it gets worse because I went to the Inspector General while I was in D.C. That was one reason I was still up, uh, on the East Coast to that period of time. Because uh, I was trying to get back. Something would come up. I had to go back to D.C. for stuff I was working on because I got involved in things. Then I get back to North Carolina where I was from trying to come back. Had to go back to D.C. So I go to the Inspector General. And the Inspector General gets involved. And they first open the, they open the file of inquiry right there on the spot to uh, uh, file of inquiry. To find out why I was telling the truth. I had the stuff, but they had to verify it still. Okay. 
I come back so in a couple that's of weeks. Encouraging. Yeah, I come back in a couple of weeks, and the guy says we've handed it to our legal department. But, well, first it was that they had verified. They know there's a reward. They know that the guy was killed, and they know that that you were there yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. You, you helped with the case and yeah. all that. Uh, and so, and uh, and so he says now we're having to give it to the legal department in the inspector general's office. Well, I go back in a few weeks, and he says the legal department's got it, and. Uh, They've never had to deal with anything like this, so they're not like experts on it. And nobody's had to deal with it, really, you know, from this angle of what's going on. And, uh, and they, but they said they cannot find any reason why it shouldn't have been paid. Well, then I, I figured they're going to now progress it to Congress because they're the investigative arm for Congress, the Inspector General of the Postal Service. You understand? They don't work for yes. the Postal Service. They don't work for the Postal Service. Okay. No, they work for Congress. Okay. So they have to report it to Congress to open up the investigation of what's going on. You see what's now it's getting in the, this means it goes into the uh, Judiciary, House and Senate. It goes into the Reform Act, uh, House Reform, uh, Senate Reform Act. They've got two different ones, different names in the House and the Senate. So there's four different departments that get involved in this, like what's going on now, all these agencies investigating stuff. So now I'm sitting there, uh, but then I call back in a few weeks to see how it's going on because they were never giving me anything in writing. So I'm always, I'm always suspicious a little bit when I, they don't, I'm not getting anything. At first, they said they couldn't give me anything until they verified it. Then, after they verified it, well, it was always a little something else. Okay. So now the guy who was handling it and was all on it is promoted to another position. Now there's nobody in this there's department. There's nobody knows the story. Well, this nobody is customary does. government yes. stuff. Yes. So I give it a few months. And uh, I call back. And they got, now they finally got a guy, but they thought I'd go away. I call back. He's got it. He's the one that's in that office now. But he doesn't know anything about it. So I have to get him started on it again. So we're going back to square one almost. And then all of a sudden they won't talk to me. Have nothing to do with me. Can't get nobody to answer. Can't what find happened to the nobody. Justice Department meanwhile? I mean, weren't they supposed well, to be dealing with this? Well, they just had it dismissed. Okay, so they had it dismissed. And meanwhile, you're kind of on your own going I'm through. To, the, I'm going to the Inspector General. The Inspector General. And, okay. So now I get and back to he had it dismissed because... He asked for it to be dismissed, and you were which stuck is, in Kansas. Which is a, 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 okay, and that was a, that's it was misconduct for him to even file a motion to dismiss. Oh, as, a, as a special now, as a postal service attorney, he could have asked for a motion to dismiss, but as a uh, attorney for the Justice Department, it was misconduct. Okay, so why did improper it, misconduct? Did he this order to dismiss? It went to a federal judge. Uh huh. Judge uh, Dale Kimball. Okay, and, and, he, and then he hands it off to the magistrate to go through the preliminaries. Yes. This yes. is a preliminary. Then it goes back to Judge Kimmel to do the final order. Okay, so the judge should know that he can't do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The magistrate and the judge. The magistrate well, and well, the judge. Well, yeah, here's, the, sure. now, no, here's the thing. If he's a, he should know it, but if he's acting as a special assistant, it's still maybe a, a little vague for the judge with all that's going on. You know what I mean? He should still well, know and, it. But now if he's acting as the Postal Service... But he's not saying it to me and stuff. Okay, now to you he's not saying he's on the Postal Service, but to the judge maybe, well, the judge I find, looks I, at him Well, as, I find out at the end the judge knew about it because... because of, he's acting as the Postal Service, he can have an order to dismiss. Miss. And so if the judge thinks he's acting as a... But he wasn't there as the legal department for the Postal Service. He was there as a, as a, special, uh, as a special assistant U.S. attorney for the Justice Department. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying, but I, I, I so I'm wondering either. Well, it's illegal. Actually, either the judge doesn't know what the heck's going on. Well, that's what I kind of thought. The judge doesn't know that this guy who actually works here is working f for the attorney general. Right, right. That's and, what and I just, thought. And I so mean, I, went, I know a little bit about federal judges, yeah, and they're pretty busy, and they just kind of look at things too. real quick, and, and it's like, okay, well, it looks to me like this. But then when I pulled up the order. Because uh, I, I hadn't read it, I, 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 my suit and I got it, and I'm not reading every little thing, yes, you know what I mean? Yes. Until I have to or something. I ain't wasting, you know. And all of a sudden I'm looking at the order, and there it is when it's a sticker service to me, the order has been dismissed, yes. and to Kurt Leslie's special assistant. Yes. They don't send it to, uh, to the special assistant for the Justice Department, they send it to the legal department. Kurt Lusty is an employee of the Postal Service. So there it is, the judge had to know it. It's on the judge's letter uh, stuff from his order. Okay, so the judge, the judge is okay. The judge knows it, and now what the judge has done wrong. Now we're assuming the judge thinks the judge he's working has committed for fraud upon the court. Well, okay, so the judge thinks he's working for the postal service. The judge don't think. Judge knows it. Okay, and he thinks he can do this order to dismiss, but 
the postal service. He's not should, there. This should he never he's be not, happening. Yeah, yeah. This it, is all, it needs to be coming from this, this side. This, since it's illegal, it's all void. Their motion to dismiss okay, is all, void as well. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm telling you, when it has to get back, but you have to get it back in front. Yeah, and you know what's funny is we've got about seven minutes here. Okay, we'll okay. finish it. Uh, so, yeah. so now the part where it gets even stronger is I went to my congresswoman in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes. And they faxed a letter to him wanting an answer. Okay. Now we've got two letters to the congresswoman from the inspector general's office. So now we've got them. Okay. You follow me? They finally got something on paper. Okay. And we've got one from the postal inspector to the congresswoman. Well, now they've used letterheads to commit a fraud, lie, deceit, deception. Who used the letterhead? The, well, I've got the one from my original one from the Postal Service. Okay. Now we've got two to my congressman yes. from the Inspector General's office, who's their, congress, their investigator, and one from the Postal Inspector to my congressman. Okay. Which constitutes mail fraud, so, so fraud. Why, why shouldn't they all be using Postal Service letterhead? Well, they are, but not to commit a fraud. You see what I mean? They, what's the fraud they're committing? The fraud is that they're untied into this whole thing. They're saying on account of, and on account of comes from because of. You see okay, what I'm saying? Okay, okay, but that's their opinion. No, it's not their opinion. There's law because of. It's, it's saying it plainly states. <laughs> okay, but account they're still arguing. I mean, it's, no, it hadn't, it's, no it's, they're it, saying it. It hasn't been brought in front of the whole public. Okay. I have sat in front of the postal unions. They said, you get this finally put together. This is before we knew that a postal lawyer and all that, they say, this definitely is, we'll get behind it. And I'm involved in other things, my own disability, I just get 600 It doesn't fraud involve knowingly uh -huh. trying to... It's bad faith. It's bad faith. It's bad faith. Well, maybe they're doing it in good faith. Maybe they honestly believe well, that this they're, is... If they're, if they're so incompetent at law... Well, they may be incompetent. Well, I mean, well, no, well, well, no, well that's where it gets a stretch to the imagination there. Then, 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 then it's still, <laughs> you know what I mean? Why are they in charge? Yeah. How could they ever get through high school? Yes. You understand? Well, I understand, if they're so incompetent. Of, how do they of, get to college? There's a lot of incompetence competence? in the world, though. Well, but not when it plainly states it in the statutes. Oh, okay. Well, I, okay. Yeah, you see. But now they've lied to the Congress. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's their honest opinion, though. Maybe they're not well, well, we're, lying. Well, maybe well, it's well, okay. well, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> this, this, now, now what has been a blessing from God? Yes. As all of a sudden you got this U.S. attorney scandal. Yes. And this is going to be part two. But it bases into, here you got the scandal going on right here. And the co common denominator is Orrin Hatch. And you go to the scandal right now, and uh, this uh, Kyle Sampson was Orrin Hatch's guy in the Justice Department. This Tolman... Uh, that was the one who stuck in the Preacher Act thing. As now the U.S. Attorney in Utah, he's Orrin Hatch's guy. The judges are Orrin Hatch's people. And I've got two more cases showing Orrin Hatch doing something. I'm I'm so that'll be the part two and part three. I'm trying to figure out here, though, that it's, what hits me is that it seems like there's this, there's this shell game going on. Not now. No, no, no. We're uncovering this. We're, we're, we're opening them up. Oh, okay. I, and I, I'm not sure. One thing about conspiracies, especially when it involves the government, is I almost immediately think it's not a conspiracy. I think it's just gross incompetence. There's no such thing. I, 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 okay. I still think they're smart enough. To not I think do they're this. too busy to be to come up with he was how hired. do we mess with wait, Fred? Wait. You know? <laughs> well, no. I, well, well, well. Uh, that'll Over a hundred thousand dollars. If I write a, book, if I write know, a fourteen hundred page book, you might be able to put it together then. But a big novel, I've been placing. But I, it just got started wrong. They didn't know who. The, they didn't know that I would follow through. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. It happens all the time. I don't get involved in every case I see and stuff like that. You just can't. You know. And uh, but what I'm saying is, is that uh, uh, the, you know now what gives this even more predominant? See, he was hired as a special assistant. Yes. That means he's special. He's supposed yes. to I, I, know and, this. And I think, you've now, got, I think you really got something there. But here's the other where, thing. Where, where, Wait a minute. Here's the other why thing. did they go hire a guy from the post office to be the special well, assistant? Well, a special assistant. They weren't even supposed to hire a special assistant to start with, oh, basically. Okay. They right. can't. Then why didn't they use a federal attorney? Yeah. Right. That's to start with. Uh, and then why don't they follow the rules? If they don't know the rules, okay. these are their rules. Yes. But how is it that I'm able to?
do it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm not the specialist that they are. I don't have the funding they have. I don't have the power to badge or the federal government behind me. You, the honor and integrity of it. I'm just out here completely out here in the ocean of life. You know what I'm saying? And they're standing on the bedrock of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I do it out there with nothing? So with this leads away from incompetence and towards conspiracy, oh, you're uh, saying. Uh, of course no they question. know what they're doing. Well, the laws are yeah, saying. Yeah, there's, no, there's no question about it. I mean, th th this isn't just mitigating and circumstantial evidence. We've got their letters on the, yes. uh, you know, on the letter. And, and we're, we've got a minute left. We're done with this part. Part. That's probably a good place to yeah. To, to, we just timed that right because okay. I didn't know whether we'd have okay, to go. That's good. If yeah. we went 15 minutes over, we'd just chop it off the other one. Or yeah. Something. Okay. So we're going to do more of this, and we're going to yeah. get into how this relates to to the, to the to even the bigger picture. Picture can't get much bigger than this. This is an uh, act of sedition. Is an attempt, is actual treason. Is to overthrow an a, 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 a organization's operating to over. It's a, a tantamount to overthrow the Constitution of the United States. Okay. Well, so you're not going to see the same word with grassroots TV, right? I, I mean, you try to bring this story to. Well, if you want to show it on uh, grassroots TV, it's fine. Yeah. Well, of course we will. Um, but you try to bring this story to other media, and they're. Well, I, I wanted to come here, but because it, it is complicated, like we've had it to talk. So we give you the time anyway. Yeah, it's hard and, to get an hour to yeah. talk about something like this. Well, that's the uh, what uh, I've watched the media control. Uh, I, I read think tank books, position papers years ago, and I've watched it all come true. And uh, and now the people that I used to talk to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. well, it's too late. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Global warming's here; it's going to keep getting worse. And uh, I was talking about it in the '70s and things, and so. Uh, I was just an average citizen trying to figure out what to do, reading the newspaper. I'm not hooked to anything big. I'm just trying to keep up in life a little bit, you know. Okay. That's why I did first aid and life saving stuff, just so I could be a player, you know. Okay. An average everyday player like anybody, you know. Okay. So that's, uh, and so we'll pick it up next time. Next time. Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. Thanks, Fred. Yeah. Chase the